Hello friends, if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm what some would call a pig farmer. And you know that this little piggy right here I refer to lovingly as my precious child. And in today's video, I want to dive into exactly why I think it might be a bad idea for you to have a precious child. Say what? What's up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. I have spent the last couple of months over on the Foundation Podcast Network running a podcast with my friend Brad that is entirely focused on building the best bag possible so that you can have all of the confidence in the world before you even step onto a tee shot to go out and score as best you can. But as I've gone back through and re-listened to some of the episodes and even found myself in an open bag world trying to build my bag from the ground up, I'm finding that it can be extremely easy to be hypocritical when it comes to how you should properly build your bag. I wanted to take just a couple minutes to address a few common issues and hangups that I see tons of players have when it comes to building their bag. The first issue is discussed in the medical community as the I gotta syndrome. Why doctors are getting involved in disc golf? I don't know, but hey, happy to have them. The I gotta syndrome refers to a player who fully believes that they have to have this specific mold as a staple in their bag. Even though when they throw that mold, it doesn't actually perform the way that they believe it does. Most commonly, this issue comes from watching pro players or experienced players in your area throw a disc and when you see that disc soaring through the air you can often tell yourself that there looks pretty darn tasty so I do believe I'll be having me one of them frisbees in my bag please. Because of this we put one copy or multiple copies of that mold inside of our bag and we convince ourselves down to our core that that disc is absolutely necessary for us to have it in the bag. Even though if we were to open our mind and try other options that are similar or around that same slot there's a very real possibility that we would find a disc that performs equally or better than that specific mold. For me, I'm having an existential crisis when it comes to my bag because of this mold right here, the Eagle. As a seven speed fairway driver, I can get insane distance out of the Eagle and I absolutely love how this disc feels in my hand. But if I really think about it, every time I step up and throw an Eagle, I'm hoping it does something similar to what Calvin Heinberg does while he throws an Eagle. Yet the only Eagle that I can get to do remotely similar things to what Calvin does with his Eagles is this guy right here. If you look at the condition of this disc, it has seen a lot of trauma and actually has a little bit of a warp to it from one time that I hit a tree way harder than any Frisbee ever should. But I have been so fixated on having an eagle in my bag that it has actually covered up other options and made it so that as I'm trying to expand my bag, I actually feel limited in what I can explore. And this is tough because I love eagles and have quite a few of them, but I'm never gonna know if the eagle is the best option for me if I'm not willing to get out there and test other options. So for the time being, I'm actually going to be putting an evader in my bag from Dynamic Discs because the hand fill is extremely similar and there's a chance that this could be a better flying eagle for my arm speed and my game. Now I can already see the comments, some of you telling me, well, Robbie, what about that one super reliable, super seasoned disc that you've had in your bag for a super long amount of time? Taking me back to the disc from the intro, my precious child. At this point in this little piggy's life, it does not fly like a traditional pig does. And I love it for that exact exact reason because I know exactly what it does. But that brings us to our second issue, the Griffin disc. There are tons of players out there who have a disc in their bag that has been beat into a state that is unrecognizable compared to the original mold or how that disc was ever supposed to fly. Now, do I think having a disc like that is an inherently bad decision? No, I certainly don't because I do that myself. The issue becomes where that disc is the only version of that mold that exists in their entire bag. I believe you'll see this most often often with fairway drivers and distance drivers where a player has beat in that disc to a certain state that it flies magnificently for them. The problem is when you ask them, oh, do you have another destroyer like that in your bag as a backup? The answer nine times out of 10 is most definitely not. I believe you need to actively be working to replace that disc with either molds that fly more like that desired flight that you're getting out of the Griffin disc out of the box or off the shelf. But the alternative is a beautiful thing in disc golf that we call cycling. Cycling is the idea of taking multiple copies of the same disc or same mold and working them into your bag so that you have the discs in multiple stages of wear and tear. If you know me, you know that I love the end of a pig and I have a ton of them at home. One of the reasons I have so many copies of pigs is so that when I go to the field and do field work, I'm pretty much throwing up shots exclusively with a pig or a polecat anyway, so I just practice with only those discs. But to address the Griffin problem of replacing my precious child, I am constantly cycling at least three pigs 
things in my bag that I take to every course. I've got my precious child, which is the most understable of all of them, followed up by the middle ground pig, which is straight, but still has some pretty reliable fade if I don't put too much juice on it. And then lastly is the workhorse pig that is super overstable still that I'm going to be throwing on a majority of shots when I need that classic pig flight. But the beauty is when you look at all three of these, they are all pretty beat in and conditioned. So over time, when this one goes away, I will have other discs that have been beat in to a point of not flying like a standard pig to step up and answer the call of duty to replace my precious child when that inevitably super sad day comes and it flies off into Valhalla right into the drink in the middle of a course, which I will regret and probably never play again just teared up a little bit thinking about that moment. Our third issue comes from people trying to become new members of the Ain't Nothing Like It Club. Stop me if you've heard someone say something like this before while they're out there on the course. Yeah, you know there ain't nothing out there like a good feeling two-line AJ Destroyer. That thing just feels absolutely amazing and the hand goes like 700 yards. That's right, I said yards because it absolutely smashes. There are tons of players who fall in love with a special run or limited edition disc and the issue becomes replacing that exact disc. This right here is a Star Stingray. If you want to buy a Stingray, they only come in DX plastic now, and they're called Super Stingray. To me, it is the exact definition of a perfect, understable mid-range. The problem is, you can't buy them anymore. They are not making more of them, so it becomes more expensive, literally by the day, to be a person throwing that disc. And if you're like me, having a $50 or $100 disc in your bag doesn't feel like a good idea because, well, I ain't living on that rich life. So if a run comes out of a disc like, I don't know, a Rebecca, Becca Cox Grand Glory, and you absolutely love that disc, I would highly suggest buying five or six of them. You have an ample amount of backups in case the worst case scenario happens where you happen to start losing them. But if you can't convince yourself that it's worth it to buy five or six of that mold, even though you throw it extremely well, my best piece of advice that I would give to you is learn to fall in love with stock stuff because stock stuff is gonna be around for the long haul. There are plenty of amazing Frisbees being made out there and there are plenty of awesome special limited runs. With all of that being said, I hope this video has been helpful to y'all, especially those building your back. Now, do I think that this is a comprehensive list of all of the errors that players and especially beginners make when building their bag? No, I don't think it is because there are quite a few out there. I do think that these are glaring issues though that could keep you from not only scoring better on the course today, but they also could lead to roadblocks that you haven't even discovered yet in your game. And I want to do my part in helping clear those roadblocks before they even hit your horizon. Plus, I didn't even talk about the biggest trap that I think players fall into because honestly we've made a video about it in the past and I'll put a little title card here in the corner for you to check out once this video is over so thank you guys for tuning in and thank you for your support we're gonna have a little bit of a weird video next week because I learned my lesson last year and trying to release normal content during worlds come on Calvin the birdie fans rooting for you baby let's bring home that world title thank you all for being the absolute best and I hope you have an amazing rest of your week but for now I'm gonna leave you with the birdie